Okay. Let me just make sure this is online right now. Let's see. There we go. Let me just share the broadcast with everybody. Hope everybody's enjoying their Christmas week. Okay, share. Uh, wait. I'll wait a minute or two for everybody to come on. See who's out there tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, there's Ed. <laughs> Hi, Adam, Brenda. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Screwed up everybody's plans by us having it online only tonight. Um, that's the way things go sometimes. You know, we don't get what we plan. <laughs> You're welcome. I hope it's something you like. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Okay. Make sure my volume's up here. Can everybody hear me okay? Is the volume all right? Just comment and say yes, no, can't hear you. It's all, it's awesome. Hi, John Camilli. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Oh, man, Ed, I don't wait till Christmas. I open mine right away. <laughs> Except for um, our family Christmas. Pat won't let me, but the gifts that people give me, I open them up. <laughs> Merry Christmas, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get in trouble for that sometimes because I like to peek, but that's okay. Hallelujah, Jesus. Okay, I think um, more people are coming online. Merry Christmas, everybody. Hope you're all well. There's Stephen and Marianne. Hallelujah. Good. See, Brenda and I are, are awesome. See, we opened our gifts. <laughs> Do you like your gift? It's a big fuzzy scarf. I love it. It's nice and warm. <laughs> Okay, well, as I was seeking the Lord for a message for Christmas time, and um, I asked Pat last night if he had a, a word for today, and he said no. I said no. Hi, Garrett and Lisa. Merry Christmas. And um, I asked him today if he had a message, and he said no, and I said no. <laughs> a little bit later, the Lord said, I do. I said, okay. So I typed it up real quick because, you know, I think social media is a, a very fertile ground of everybody sharing what they think all the time. And um, when the Lord tells me I have something, I'd love to post it because it really challenges what I think and the way I see things. And so he started talking to me about the Christmas about Christmas and the Christmas tree. And he did, and he says that he um, he began to talk to me about it. I want to share with you some thoughts. And I did, for those of you that are listening tonight and watching, I did post my notes online on my wall. So you don't have to try to write these down. You can go look at it later or follow along. But I, um, he began to talk to me about he is the tree. Of course, we know from Scripture, these are all Scriptures, that Jesus is, is the tree of life, right? He is the Christ tree that is displayed for you and me. And that's the title he gave me. And um, the Lord loves 
the Christmas season because it's the one time of year where everyone gives gifts to one another, where they show love and kindness to one another, where, where they're happy, maybe temporarily for some. But it's one, it's the one time of year where we show grace to each other. And um, the Lord looks at that. You know, there's a lot of reason why a lot of people don't celebrate Christmas. But I have to say, he's the Christ tree. And that's the way I look at my Christmas tree. He is our tree of life. He is the Christ tree that is displayed for you and me. And when the Lord gave me that title, I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> so let's look at some of the scriptures on that. Jesus, the Christ tree, right? So we're going to go to Galatians 3, verse 13. And it's all on the notes that I put on my wall. So you can follow along if you go to my wall. Or you can print it out or you can read it later. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ purchased our freedom. He redeemed us from the curse and the doom of the law and his condemnation by himself becoming a curse for us because it's written in the scriptures. Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree and is crucified. To the end, that through their receiving Christ Jesus, the blessed promise to Abraham might come to us Gentiles, so that through faith we might all receive the realization of the promise of the Holy Spirit. When I look at my tree, I see the Christ tree, and I see the light that he displays, I see the, the ornaments as the fruits of the spirit that he displays. He is our Christ tree. Now, Romans 7, 4 says, Likewise, my brethren, you have undergone death as to the law through the crucified body of Christ, so that now you may belong to one another, to another, to him who was raised from the dead, in order that you may bear fruit for God. And I see those ornaments on the Christ tree as bearing fruit for God. Because the fruit that's on the tree in the book of Revelation says it's for all seasons. It's the fruits of the Spirit given to all men to partake of. And I love that. It says, why did he hang on the tree? So that we may bear fruit for God. He died for you and me but also so that we can display him to everybody around us. And so the Lord began to give me this whole outline. And all I did, he gave me the titles, and all I did was find the scriptures. Because I want to know what God thinks about Christmas, about what the Lord thinks about him being the Christ tree, and how he wants us to enjoy and celebrate who he is in this holiday, even though he didn't die in the Christmas season, it's still a time when we choose to remember that and celebrate his gift to us and the fruits that are available to us for right now. Now, Revelations 22, 2. You guys ever see 2, 2, 2? Here's a 2, 2, 2 for you. Revelations 22, 2 says, through the middle of the Broadway of the city. Also on either side of the river was the tree of life, with its 12 varieties of fruit, yielding each month a fresh crop. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing and the restoration of the nations. So Christ gave healing and deliverance and restoration for all men. And that's something to be thankful for as we give gifts to each other. Make sure you hand out love to them and kindness to them and the fruits of the Spirit to them. Make sure you do good to others. Make sure you love them and really love them because that's what he wants from our life, isn't it? Now, about the ornaments and the fruit displayed on the tree, it says in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. I'm on that tree, hanging there. In him, I have shared his crucifixion. 
It is no longer I who live, but Christ the Messiah lives in me. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith. In and by adherence to and in reliance on and complete trust in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. What other reason we should be celebrating and happy because we have that tree that set us free. He's the reason for the season, right? And it says we live by faith what in adherence to him, in reliance on him, and complete trust. So when I see the tree, that's what I see. Lord, you shine through me, just like that tree. I want people to see Christ in me, in all your different facets, in all your different colors, in all your different fragrances. We're hanging on that tree. And we are a display for others to see him in a unique way. The Christmas tree is a parable. It's a parable of Christ, our tree. Okay. Now, Proverbs 11.30 says, The fruit, the fruit of the uncompromisingly righteous is a tree of life. And he who is wise captures human lives for God as fishers of men. And he gathers them and receives them for eternity. We are that tree of life. We are like that Christmas tree that shines with the knowledge of Jesus, that bears fruit. And the people look at us, they can see different aspects of Jesus in our life. How bright are we? How shiny and colorful are we? The more fruit we bear, the more colors we show others. Now, another one, Proverbs 3, 18. It says, Wisdom which is one of the attributes of Jesus. Wisdom is a tree of life to those that lay hold on her. And happy, blessed, and fortunate to be envied is everyone that holds her fast. Happy, blessed, and fortunate to be envied are all of those that hang on that tree. That's you and me. Because in God's wisdom, he gave his son Jesus to us, right? That's exciting to me. I love Christmas. Now, Proverbs 15, 4. Talks about the fruit we display. Good and bad. <laughs> a gentle tongue. I would call it a kind tongue. With its healing power. Is a tree of life. But willful contrariness breaks down the spirit. So, depending on how we speak and what fruit we are giving out, even in our words and the way we speak, can either bring healing power, because we're the healing tree, or we can hurt someone and possibly break down their spirit by the words we say. See, we're the fruit that's to be received by others, but what kind of fruit are they getting from us, right? Jesus said, I want you to be the display of me to those around your life. I want you to display me. You are the living epistles. You are the witnesses. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Christine. Hi, Ruth. <laughs> Anybody else out there? Jesus wants us to be those living trees to everybody. They want People are looking for Jesus. So what do they see, right? Now, this morning, or actually, yeah, it was this morning because it was late last night. I had an interesting account an encounter with two angels. And they had the persona of female. Um, just because um, those are some of the attributes of the Lord. And one angel was named Grace and the other one was named Mercy. And they came and said, come, Sue, we have something to show you. They took me by the hand, and I flew to heaven with them. Grace and mercy, right? Now, that's a parable because God has grace and mercy for his people. Remember, your heavenly encounters oftentimes are parables or teachings to reveal to you what God wants to release, okay? 
So Grace and Mercy held me by the hand, took me up to heaven, to the throne, and the Lord was sitting on the throne, and Grace had a pitcher of water, a silver pitcher, and Mercy had a silver pitcher, and it was full of water. They each had a pitcher. And they came, stepped up to me as I stood there in front of the throne, and they poured them on my head, both pitchers of water. <laughs> and um, I knew that it was an impartation of grace and mercy for our lives for this next year, for, for this next, the new season we're in. That God wants to release impartations of his grace and of his mercy so that we can display him in a very radical, supernatural way. And we can do release impartations. Now it says here, he said these anointings will bring restoration and favor. Grace and mercy is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's his mercy. He wants to have grace and mercy to people, right? But he said these anointings will bring restoration and favor to the people that he puts around our lives. He wants to release anointings to us, impartations of grace and mercy. Now, the Lord talk, started talking to me about the role of grace and mercy in our life. And he took me to Exodus 34, verse 5 through 7. When the Lord passed before, is that my book? Okay. Exodus 34. I'm asking Pat, my concordance, for help here. Okay. The rule of grace and mercy. Grace and mercy come from God the Father. It says right here, Exodus 34, verse 5 through 7. The Lord descended in a cloud and stood before as Moses stood there. And he proclaimed his names as he passed in front of him. I mean, think about that. God begins to declare his names as he passes in front of you. It's amazing. And the Lord passed by him, verse 6, and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious. Mm, there it is. Mercy and grace. Yeah. Right there. From the Father's face. Mercy and grace. Mm. Hi, Marsh and Holly. God is a merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abundant, abundant in loving kindness and truth, keeping mercy and loving kindness for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and who will by no means clear the guilty, but he will visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. So what he was saying here, he said, I am God, and I want to show you my fruit. I want to show you who I am, aspects of me, my attributes, my nature. I'm declaring who I am. You ask to see me, to see my glory, so I'm showing you what's in my glory. And he said, it's grace and mercy. He said, grace and mercy slow to anger, abundant loving kindness, and truth. There's five fruits right there. Five, which is grace. Grace, mercy, no anger, loving kindness, and truth. God was displaying fruit as he passed by Moses. He was declaring who he was. And he said, this is what I'm going to do. In the time that's ahead of all of you. Well, <laughs> he said, I'm going to declare who I am through you to those looking for me. I'm going to show my grace. I'm going to show my mercy. I'm going to show my loving kindness, my truth. I'm not going to 
blast them with anger. I want them to know that I love them. And so God is, is it's harvest season. And the Lord is giving me this this afternoon. And then he says, 2 Chronicles 30. Go there. 2 Chronicles 30, verse 9. It says, if you return to the Lord, your brothers and your children will find compassion and their captors, and they will return to this land. They will find compassion with their captors. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful, and he will not turn his face from you if you return to him. Now, the Lord deliberately gave me these scriptures because he's revealing different aspects that he wants to release and display in the time, in these days. And so he said, and this is part of returning back to God, turning to him, looking at him, drawing closer to him. He says, if you do, you will find compassion, even if you're captive, even your enemies, I will give you favor with them. I, they will begin to have compassion on you. I will turn their hearts towards you. That's an amazing promise, isn't it? And I'll bring you back to this land. So even if we're in a hard circumstance and we find we have enemies all around us, he says, what, my grace and my mercy and my compassion will turn the hearts of your captors towards you. That's amazing. And he said, I won't turn away from you. He says, I'm going to draw you to me. Isn't that amazing? Okay. Psalm 18, 24 through 26. It's all on the paper that I posted my notes that are on my wall. So you can follow along or print them out or read them later. Psalm 18, 24. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, my uprightness and right standing with him, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. Verse 25, here it is. With kind and merciful, you will show yourself kind and merciful. With an upright man, you will show yourself upright. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. With the perverse, you will show yourself contrary. And what the Lord is saying to me today through this, he says, I am going to reveal my names wherever you go. Wherever you go, I'm going to release a new flow, and I'm going to show people who I am even through your life. He says, when you're kind to someone, I will release kindness. When you're merciful to someone, I will release mercy. When you're gracious to someone, I will release my grace. But the pure, if you release pureness, I will show myself as pure. Why? Because we display him. And he says, but if you're perverse to someone, I'm going to deal with that. <laughs> so be careful how you display and what fruit you display in the coming days because God is after fruit. He's, after, he's looking at our ornaments. He's looking at our lights. He's looking at what we put on and how we act around other people. And so it's very important to him that his names, his qualities, his attributes, his fruits be given wherever we go. He said, don't be mean, be loving, be kind, be merciful, be gracious. He says, be forgiving, and I will show myself as those attributes, as you release them, I, they will also see the fruit of it, and they will reap the benefit of just being around you. Why? Because people are looking for God. They're looking for his love, right? Now, the Lord showed me five fruits that he wants, or I would call them attributes, or that should be, he wants to be more evident, more prominently in this next year. He's going to display five ways, okay? Let me put it that way. And it all has to 
do with the fruit of Christ or the Christ tree that's in you and me, right? The first one is found in Psalm 41, 4. Psalm 41, 4. It says, Lord, be merciful and gracious to me. Heal my inner self, for I have sinned against you. And the Lord said, my fruit of repentance is going to be displayed in a more prominent way in the coming days. My fruit of forgiveness and repentance, mercy and grace, it's all in Psalm 41.4. But look at what this does when we ask for that. It brings inner healing. It brings healing. Lord, heal my inner self. I've made mistakes. I've messed up. <laughs> I'm broken. You know, whatever reason why we need healing. What brings it? Repentance. It says here, Lord, be merciful and gracious to me. Heal my inner self. Because I've messed up. I've sinned. And so repentance is one of those ornaments being displayed on the tree for you and me because that's going to be a, set, a sign. There's five of them he wants to display. And this is number one, repentance. The Lord is just showing me all this today. He says, this is what I want. I'm doing something bigger than just one. Okay, number two. What's the second ornament on that tree, right? Okay, Proverbs eleven seventeen. Proverbs eleven seventeen. It says, "The merciful, the kind, and the generous man benefits himself, for his deeds return to bless him. But he who is cruel and callous to the wants of others brings on himself retribution." Now, obviously, ornament number two here is justice. The justice of God is coming. And we have to be really careful how we treat people because what we display is what's going to come back. Now, it says here, he wants us to display mercy, kindness, and generosity because it says here in this verse, because it will also benefit you. What you display comes back your way. It says, your deeds will return to bless you. So don't release a curse because co it'll come back to you. I thought this was really an amazing verse. So I'll read it again. The merciful, kind, and generous man benefits himself. It comes back. The fruit comes back to you. For your deeds will return to bless you. So the more good that you sow, the more it's going to bless you this year and the years ahead of you. You want them to return to you. But if you're cruel and callous to the ones of others, it'll come back to you as retribution, justice. And so we're going to see a lot of justice in 2024 about how we treat each other, talk bad about to each other, attack each other. We're going to see a lot of more deeds returning back. To people because that's an ornament being put out there and those things are going to return so these are things the Lord is saying these five things that are going to be displayed in the coming days and that we got to be careful what we're releasing so that we get the blessing and the benefit back to us right okay he said the next one the third one the third ornament I I called it assistance um, aid or um, help and Hebrews 4 16 I'll read it to you out of the King James and then I'll read it a second time out of the Amplified Classic to you now Hebrews 4 16 says in the King James let us therefore let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and where was my encounter today, early this morning? Grace and mercy were dumped out on my head before the throne. This is exactly what happened. Grace and mercy are two 
fruits of the Spirit that are going to be very prominent in the year ahead of us. Grace and mercy. Now, it says you can all come up here and get it. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Grace and mercy will meet your needs. Not just money. You need grace and mercy. You need the favor of God. Grace and mercy will help in the time of need. Now, I'll read it in the Amplified now. Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly, three things, draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's merited, unmerited favor, that we may receive mercy for our failures, our mistakes, our mess-ups, our troubles, whatever, and find grace to help in good time for every need. And what that means is the appropriate help, well-timed help, coming just when you need it. What's better than that? <laughs> Fearlessly. So we don't come to the throne and say, God, I'm in trouble, help me in fear and stress and worry and we're de depressed. He said, no, come up here fearlessly. Come up here confidently. Come up here boldly. Draw near to the throne of grace and mercy. The angel grace and the angel mercy that dumped those two pitchers of water on my head. Those two manifestations are going to be the prominent releases in the in the years ahead grace and mercy the two great anointings to bring restoration and healing now it says you will receive my unmerited favor you will receive mercy for mistakes and failures you will find grace to help for every single need. Underline, highlight this verse. <laughs> Appropriate help, well-timed help, coming just when we need it. God's always on time. He's never late. We might think he's late, but he's not late. He comes right when you need it. Now, isn't that exciting? That's ornament number three. Two more to go. The next one, I call this one forgiveness. It's found in Hebrews 8, 12. Because the Lord says here, I will be merciful and gracious towards your sins, and I will remember your deeds of unrighteousness no more. Grace and mercy. He looks at us with grace and mercy. And when we repent, he forgives and forgets. The church needs to learn to do that more. Because what we do is just bring junk up over and over and over. And say, you need to repent. You need to do this. Blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, God, when they repent, the Lord, the Lord wipes it clean. But you know what? Human beings remember. And we need to forgive more. And then we need to forget like the Lord. We need to see them through grace and mercy. Now, I'm not talking about God will judge these things, but I'm saying the fruit that we display is important to God. He wants grace and mercy. When we repent, there's forgiveness, and then he removes it. Okay. I call that forgiveness on that ornament. Last one. Prosperity. Now, Prosperity is not just money. <laughs> That's just one aspect of prosperity. The Lord gave me two scriptures for this ornament, okay? Matthew 5, 7. Blessed, happy to be envied, and spiritually prosperous, with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor, and salvation regardless of their outward conditions 
are those who display mercy, for they shall obtain mercy. Talking about mercy and grace. Now, let's go over that again. Blessed, happy to be envied, and spiritually prosperous. That means in every area of your life, you're bearing fruit. You're displaying it for others to see. And they look at you and they see that you're prospering, but in every area of your life. It says you will have life, joy, and satisfaction because of God's favor. Mercy and grace bring God's favor and salvation. Regardless of what's happening in your life, your life could be falling apart. Everything can be falling apart around you. But you're full of joy. You're full of grace. You're full of mercy. It says you are spiritually prosperous because you've learned to live in my mercy and grace. You've learned to display my favor. How, how many of I want that? More of that, Jesus. Right? Why? Because so many people are falling apart. And they will look at you and they'll say, why aren't you falling apart? Why aren't you depressed or worried? Why aren't you afraid? I have a life flow. I have mercy. I have grace. I have God's favor. It says I'm spiritually prosperous. Life, joy, and satisfaction. Why? Because he is the life tree that lives inside of us, right? Isn't that exciting? Now the other scripture is 3 John 1, 2. 3 John 1, 2. I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep well, even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. Body, spirit, and soul. All three parts of you prospering, healthy, Strong. I pray that you may prosper in every way. Your body prospers. Your soul prospers. Your spirit prospers. See, grace and mercy bring healing, health inside you, just like the scriptures I read to you on the front side of this note. And those of you that came in late, you can re watch the replay. I posted these notes on my wall before I did the video tonight. And you can get the whole message that I'm giving to you. So those of you that came late, I'll tell you, I had an encounter this morning with the Lord. And these two angels came. And they looked like female. They're not female, but they had female attributes. Big white wings. Beautiful. And one was the angel Grace, who I've met many times. And the other one was the angel Mercy, who I'd never met before. And Grace and Mercy came and took me by the hand and took me to the throne room. And I'm standing before the Lord on the throne. Now Grace had a silver pitcher full of water, and Mercy had a silver pitcher full of water. And they're standing on either side of me. And then they dump them both on my head. <laughs> Just They dump the water on my head. Because God is going is releasing, now listen to you guys, God is releasing now to his people impartations of grace and mercy for your lives to be displayed before others because we are the living epistles. So there's an anointing of grace and an anointing of mercy. And he said, these anointings of grace and mercy will bring restoration and favor wherever you go. And that's the scriptures I gave you. All these scriptures tonight were scriptures on that encounter. And the Lord does not want us to be afraid. He does not want us to be worried and in fear. He will meet our needs. He said, come up here. Come up to my throne. Come boldly, fearlessly, confidently, and draw near to my throne of grace 
and you will find help in the time of need. You will find mercy. And you will find my favor. And every time, no matter what your need is, you will find the appropriate help right when you need it. Right there should settle our fears, right there. No matter what comes in the future, we're going to be fine. Why? Because we are in Christ's tree. It's in you and me. And he's displaying who he is through us and to us, of course, so that we can shine with him. So that we can give out the fruits of his kindness, his love, his joy, his peace, his mercy, his grace, forgiveness. Be kind to one another. Don't be mean. Don't be judgmental. The Lord's really been dealing with me on that because as a prophet, I can be critical because I see stuff. And the Lord says, don't. I know that that's operating, but <laughs> don't be critical. Be loving, be kind, show them mercy, show them grace. Now remember, as I share with you on my notes, whatever you release is going to come back to you. And it's a warning, but it's also the role of mercy and grace. It's a law of his spirit. And he said, whatever you release this year coming up is going to come back to you. And so... And when it comes back to you, it will return to bless you. That's found in Proverbs 11, 17. What I give out, I want to come back and be a blessing to my life, right? I don't want to reap what I sow. I want to sow good things. So the Lord told me to share this because there's a lot of negativity around Christmas. And I was really asking the Lord what he thought about it. And what he thought about this season. And and he really, this is what I shared at the beginning of the video, those that you came in late. He said, I really want people to understand about the tree. Jesus is the tree of life. He is the Christ tree. He hung on that tree for you and me. And as you pick up your cross every day and follow me as followers and be my display, you're on that tree too. And you are shining bright. You're shining with the knowledge of me. He said, you are my Christ tree. And so when I look at the Christmas tree, that's what I see. And that's what's in my heart. Because it's about Jesus. He is the reason for us celebrating in this season. Even though he wasn't born in this season, he is always the reason. I don't care what month you celebrate it, what week you celebrate it, what day you celebrate it. Every day, he's the reason. And so, we have this holiday. So we enjoy his life. We enjoy his death. We enjoy his resurrection. We enjoy the Christ life that still flows through us. And all the fruits. So mercy and grace are going to come into a prominent place in your race this year. Mercy and grace brings favor, brings prosperity, brings peace, brings healing, inside and outside. All these things that I gave you on here, pray into those scriptures and say, Lord, I want to display you the way the tree displays all of your fruit all of your character, all of your nature, all of your graces. I want to be that display. I want to see things the way you see them. And I want to enjoy the fruit of walking with you. So I wanted to give this short message tonight, not to take a lot of your time, because I know a lot of you have friends and family coming over this weekend. So I just wanted to share this, because this is how God feels. This is what the Father feels about us loving people, giving gifts to each other. You know, you might not have money for physical gifts. Be a gift. You be a gift. And be kind to someone. Be loving. Be gracious. Show mercy. Show forgiveness. 
show justice. Do something good for somebody else. And be that tree with the ornaments that people can see. That they can be thankful even in a hard time. Even if they're in hard circumstances. Be that fruit that will maybe soften and lessen the burden in their heart. Maybe it'll give them temporary peace for that moment. But show love. Now, it says, be merciful, sympathetic, tender, responsive, and compassionate. That's Luke 6, 36. Even as your Father is all these. Now remember, at the very beginning of this message, when Moses asked God to show him his glory, when Moses said, Lord, show me your glory. Show me who you are. Show me your name. I want to know you. I want to see you. I want to smell you, taste you, touch you. And God said, I'll pass before you. I'll tell you who I am. That's found in Galatians 3.13. It says here. Now, wait a minute. That is, um, wait a second. Oh, Exodus 34, sorry. I already talked about this earlier. I just have to find it on my paper. Exodus 34. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the name of the Lord. The Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God of grace and mercy. You can read that for yourself. A God merciful and gracious. Slow to anger. Don't be quick to be angry this year when you get frustrated. Just take a deep breath, breathe, and release grace in that moment instead of anger. Release mercy in that moment. Slow to anger, abundant in loving kindness and truth. That's who our God is. That's all the ornaments being displayed on him. He keeps mercy and loving kindness for thousands, forgiving. How are we going to display Jesus today? You're the Christ tree now. You're the living epistles that people are going to read. You have all the ornaments, the fruit on your tree. How many ornaments do you have on your in your life? How many? How many have, are we developing so that people can see our fruit? And you have lights. You are the light of the world now because Christ is in you. So you're the Christ tree. So as you're celebrating this week with your family, with your friends, wherever you are, remember that. Be kind. Be gentle. Be loving. Be forgiving. Don't hold grudges. Forgive and forget. And have fun and enjoy God. Because he said those blessings will come right back to you. God wants to bear us to bear fruit. He wants to enjoy Christmas with you. Because he is the Christ tree. And so are you. And so be that Christ tree to others. Even in the world as they celebrate Christ their way. Because they don't understand these things. But be the difference. Shift the atmospheres. Release love. Release mercy and grace. And watch situations just change. Because you're shifting atmospheres. You're releasing Jesus to others by who you are. So I want to encourage you guys. Be, be the Christmas that other people need. They need Christ. And sometimes you're the only Christ they're going to see. So it's up to you and me what others see. Have fun and enjoy Jesus as we celebrate who he is, even with others. Give him a good display. And the Lord is pleasing to him. These are the things he showed me today. And so have a blessed Christmas. Be thankful. Yeah. Um. So, we didn't have church tonight. This is our church. Um, we just 
felt the Lord said to stay home and do this. Uh, but we will have service at SOG on Christmas Eve on Sunday night. So those of you that have no place to go for Christmas, you're welcome to join us. Or you can catch us online. They will do a Christmas tree, Christmas Eve service. And so at the end, before I pray for all of you, we'll just take an offering for the Salvation of God Church. Because we, we still meet. And um, so you guys know how to give that come on here and watch all the time. Um, you can give in different ways. You can give through the Givelify app. And the links are in the video. So you can look at the links later and you can give electronically through Givelify, through Cash App, through PayPal, through Venmo, and even through Facebook Messenger. Um, and we thank you for your support. We thank you for your friendship. And most of all, thank you for your prayers for Pat and I as we pray for you. Because what? Together we are God's display to everyone that comes our way. So, Father, I thank you tonight, Lord, that you would be glorified and revealed through everything we say and do. Lord, that you would display your names and who you are and your character and your nature through us. No matter where we go, your voice speaks through us, your light shines through us, your fruit is displayed through our lives and people partake of our lives by partaking of our fruit. Lord, you're the Christ tree. And we are also the Christ tree because we pick up our cross and we hang on it too every day as we follow you. And follow it, Father, I ask for grace and mercy, those two anointings for this next year and, and even beyond. It's not for just one year, it's for for moving more into the anointing of grace and mercy that releases healing and favor. Lord, those five ornaments that I described tonight. Father, let transformation, let miracles begin to happen wherever we go. Lord, that you would reveal who you are. <laughs> that we would find grace and mercy even for ourselves. For our families, our children, Father, for, for the people around us, for the homeless, for those that don't have anybody right now, that grace and mercy flow, that miracles and healing flow, that salvation and deliverance flow. Lord, that even those that have nobody, let them feel your hug right now. Let them ease the burden of their heart, their loneliness, Lord. Let them feel your love, your mercy, your care everywhere. They're not alone. When they look to you, they have everything. They have everything that you are, Jesus. And Lord, I bless everybody watching tonight. Go and be those great big lights, those ornaments. Go and be the faces of Jesus. Go and release the graces of Jesus. And go and enjoy the presence of the Lord with others. Show love and kindness. And I want to hear all the testimonies <laughs> that you guys are going to have. So let the anointing of mercy and grace now flow from me to you. Right through this camera. And all the favor of the Father, of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit be with you all. In Jesus' name. Make Mommy proud. Love you guys. And so at the end, 